Hello, and thank you for your interest in my presentation, a look at Colonial Mexico Catholic Records. But before we get into the presentation, here's a little disclaimer. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, Here's a little bit about myself. My name is Moises Garza, and I have been doing genealogy since 1998. And my passion for genealogy started in the fields of uh, West Texas, uh, where my dad used to tell a story after story about his maternal grandparents. And that's where I became very interested in finding out more about them and who their parents were and so forth. Um, and doing genealogy has been in a tremendous experience and has provided me with a sense uh, of belonging that I didn't have before. And my main focus of research is South Texas and Northeastern Mexico. And if you want to learn more about me or find out uh, what I'm up to or what I'm doing and all my other projects, just go visit MoisesGarza.com uh, to learn more about me. And this is what you will learn today. You're going to learn about the brief history of the Catholic Church in Mexico, the various record types created by the Catholic Church, baptism records, marriage records, marriage investigations, marriage dispensations, death records, where to find them online, and also where to find them offline, and some index books to help you along the way. Now, a brief history of the Catholic Church. It is important to know a little bit about the Catholic Church and the relationship with the Mexican government. So you could have an idea of uh, things that might have affected the creation of record types. Now, the first priest arrived in Mexico during the conquest, and that happened between 1519, 1521. And fortunately for us, we have been able to find records all the way to the 1550s about church and marriage records in Mexico City. Also, we have the Mexican independence from Spain in 1821. Unfortunately, the Catholic Church sided with Spain, and that caused a rift between the Mexican uh, government and the church. Then the Constitution of 1857 declared that um, the government was going to start keeping vital records and that the church records were no longer going to be um, valid to conduct the uh, daily, um, you could say, government transactions. Then Benito Juarez in 1859 created the Civil Registration uh, Office, to be able to create those records that the Constitution of 1857 declared. Then we have Porfirio Diaz comes to power from 1876 to 1911, and he caused the reconciliation of the Catholic Church. But then Venustiano Carranza in 1917, with the new Constitution, um, they stated that the church and the government should be separate. And then we have the Cristero Wars of 1926 through 1929, and some areas of Mexico lasted longer. And the Cristero Wars are good to know about because some of the priests went into hiding, and some priests actually got killed during that time. So that affected the creation of records also. Now, the various record types created by the Catholic Church... These are the basic ones, the christenings, baptisms, the marriage inv uh, investigations, dispensations, also deaths, and burials, confirmations, communion, and church censuses. And we're just going to focus on some of those. And the first record type we're going to look at are the baptismal records. And this is the information that you can find. You can find the name, date of birth sometimes, how old, place of birth, name of parents, name of paternal grandparents, name of maternal grandparents. But not all the time. Some records do, and we're going to look at some of those records throughout the centuries. And this is a very early baptismal record, uh, dated 1565. And this is actually one of my ancestors. His name is Josef. And as you can see, the record is kind of hard to read. It's very faded, but, you know, uh, you'll get better as you practice and transcribe more of them. His name is in baby blue. In green is the date. The dark blue, that's the name of the father. And in purple is the name of the mother. And we're going to follow the same format with all the other records. And as you could see, there's a transcription on the bottom. 
and it does not have much information, just the name of the mother, the father, and who was the godparent, in this case, Baltasar Venegas. Then we go to 1695, and this is a baptism of Diego Gonzalez, who's my seventh great-grandfather. And in green, you could see the date and the place where he got baptized in baby blue, his name, and then we have the uh, dark blue, the name of the father, and then the mother. And all these images come from Family Search. If you're wondering, that's where I was able to find them. Now, this is a 1764 baptism of Jose de la Trinidad Lopez, son of my fifth great grandparents, Casildo Lopez and Isabel Garcia. And it's always good to take the time to transcribe these documents because it'll make you slow down and analyze and take in the record. And for example, it has a place where he um, got baptized, has his name, the name of the father, the mother. And then in green towards the bottom, I also pointed there, it says Francisco Angel de la Garza and Felipe Silvera. Well, it turns out that they're also my ancestors. So his uh, godparents are also my ancestors. So it turns out that these two couples were re uh, not related, but they were at least friends or talked to each other to be able to baptize each other's children. So I thought that was very interesting. Now, this is an 1880 baptism. I know it's not a Mexico colonial baptism record, and I consider Mexico colonial anything prior to 1821. And this is of my great-grandfather, Pedro Marroquin. But I wanted to show, show it to you because, as you could see, it has a lot of more information. And these more recent baptism records, they do include the names of the grandparents. And in this case, you could see it says Jose Angel Marroquin and Francisca Perez were the parents. And then you have the abuelos paternos, which are the paternal grandparents. And uh, it has Manuela Marroquin, and then it has Guadalupe Rodriguez, and then through the mother's side, Narciso Perez, and Maria Juana Tamez. And now we're going to look at the marriage records. And this is the type of information you're going to be able to find. The name of the couple, where they were from, names of the parents, he previously married, place of birth. And this is the 1810 uh, marriage record of Rafael de la Garza and Tomasa Sanchez, who are my ancestors also. And as you could see, the record, it's kind of difficult to read. But what you want to do, you get the neighboring records. Some of them may be more legible. And fortunately for us, all these records, baptismals, marriages, and death records, they follow like a specific format. Um, so it will be easier for you to decipher those records. And something to look out for with marriage records. This is the 1678 marriage of Pedro Longoria and Agustina Garcia. They're my eighth great grandparents. And something to look out for is marriage dispensations. Remember I told you about slowing down and analyzing the record? Well, as you could see, in underlined in red, it says virtud de dispensa. And if you don't know what a dispensa is, you may just overlook that and, you know, disregard it. But what that is telling us is that there's a marriage investigation that was done for the couple. And for the longest time, this couple was at one of my brick walls. I couldn't find their parents. Fortunately for me, I came across the marriage record, and it said virtud de dispensa. The marriage record does not have the parents, but I knew that there was a dispensation done, so I had to go look for that. So now we're going to talk about marriage dispensations. And they were required when there was uh, consanguinity, blood relatedness, when there were second or third cousins, they had to have one done. I've seen it for cases, even fourth cousins. Affinity, relation by marriage or sexual relationship. Also, if they were ultramarinos, basically ultramarino means they were not born in Mexico. So a marriage investigation would have to be conducted to make sure that person was not married in that other place. So we're going to look at marriage investigations. The information you will find is the names of the couples, place of birth, and where they were from, names of parents, names of grandparents, names of great-grandparents, further generations sometimes, and witness reports as to their quality and if they were good citizens. So this is the 1770, I'm sorry, 1678 marriage investigation. 
of Pedro Longoria and Agustina Garcia. They're my eighth great grandparents. And you can find them on Family Search and the microfilm 0168113. And it's image 164 and it's 11 pages long. Uh, but most marriage investigations, they contain all the genealogical information on the first page. Uh, it's a little tip just to make it easier for you. And what's great about this uh, marriage investigation, it includes the names of the parents. And this is a, an extraction of the genealogical information. And this is actually from a book that I will tell you about later on. As you could see, the marriage investigation was conducted January 23, 1678 in Monterrey. And it mentions Pedro Longoria, HN means hijo natural, meaning that the parents were not married. And that he's from La Villa de Saltillo, from the village of Saltillo. And the parents, he tells you where they were from. One from Saltillo, the other one from Monterrey. And then we have Agust Agustina Garcia, who is hija legítima of Diego Garcia de Quintanilla and Maria Ana de Sosa. So this tells me that there may not be a marriage record for Lorenzo and Antonia, but one for Diego Garcia and one for Maria de Sosa. And how are they related? Well, their ancestors were actually brothers. And as you could see, Pedro Longoria was the son of Antonia Rodriguez, and Antonia was the daughter of Andrea Rodriguez and Captain Fernán Blas Pérez. And Agustina was the daughter of Diego Garcia and Maria Ana de Sosa. And Diego was the son of Lucas Garcia and Juliana Quintanilla. So that tells you how they're specifically related. Now, the death records. The information that you can find in church uh, death records is the cause of death, place of death, name of husband or husband, I'm sorry, husband or wife, name of parents, mention of children, place of burial. And this is 1802 death burial record of Maria Felipe Cervera, who is my sixth great-grandmother. And the record states that she was 100 years old when she passed away. So I didn't have a birth um uh, date for her so that puts her death, uh, birth date at 1702 it also mentions both husbands Jose Vela founder of the church which is something interesting for family history where she says she wants to be buried in La Capilla uh, along her husband Jose Vela and that she's entitled because Jose Vela was the founder of the church or helped pay for the church Now, this is the 1695 death record of Juan Bautista Chapa, who's my ninth great-grandfather. And he's buried in the parochial church of Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico. And as you could see in baby blue, we have his name uh, on the margin and also on the document. And in green, we have the year and also where he was buried at. So it's very interesting. Now, where to find these records online? The best place that you could uh, go to is FamilySearch.org. Mexico, you're going to be able to find baptisms for Mexico from 1560 to 1950. Marriages for Mexico from 1570 to 1950. Mexico deaths, 1680 to 1940. But I've seen them go all the way to 2002. And this is how you where you go to Family Search. So you type in FamilySearch.org in your search bar, then click on Search, and then you could uh, on the right bottom corner browse all published collections, or you could actually try and search for them. And then you go to Mexico, and in my case, I clicked on Tamaulipas, but you could apply this to any other Mexican state, and then click on the Catholic Church records. And that's it. You start browsing the microfilms or find the church where your ancestor was from. And you're going to be able to see all those records there. Now, where do you find them offline? Unfortunately, the only places where you're going to be able to find them offline are in Mexico, in the archives for the diocese. And as an example, the diocese where my ancestor is from is now the Diocese of Monterrey. So we need to go visit those uh, archives for the Diocese of Monterrey in Monterrey, Nuevo León, to be able to find those records. But luckily for us, we have Family Search, who has microfilmed almost everything for those locations and for a lot of, part of parts of Mexico. 
Now, index books and websites. Uh, the Spanish American Genealogical Society has indexed a lot of uh, church records. And a lot of these indexes are available on Family Search. But for example, for my area, I know Guerrero Family Search has not uh, indexed those church records. So that's where these type of books come very handy. Now, this is for Nuevo León, Tamaulipas, and Coahuila. Now, if you live, in, if your ancestors are from any other part of Mexico, do some research, see if there's uh, any books that have indexed any records for the particular area that you're researching. Now, remember that image I showed you with the extraction of the marriage investigation? It comes actually from this book, Index to the Marriage Investigation of the Diocese of Guadalajara, Prince of Coahuila, Nuevo León, no, Santander, Texas, 1653 to 1750. And then that book has a continuation and it covers the year 1751 to 1779. And if you're looking for marriage investigations from any other place, I highly recommend this book, Sagrada Mitra de Guadalajara, Antiguo Obispado de la Nueva Galicia. Unfortunately, Family Search has not indexed any of those marriage investigations yet. But luckily for us, we have some index websites. We have the, for the Archdiocese of Guadalajara, there's this project and you could go there right now. It's called uh, guadalajaradispensas.com and they have been trying to index every microfilm of uh, marriage dispensations for the di Diocese of Guadalajara. In the Diocese of Guadalajara, you, as you could see in this map, Mapa de la Nueva España del Siglo uh, XVI, you could see the whole area that they it covered. This is actually South Texas, so this is all northern Mexico. And then we have the Archdiocese of Michoacán, who, that is being indexed by Villadolid Dispensas. It's another project modeled after Guadalajara Dispensas, and they're indexing all this area. And as you could see, there's the Archdiocese of Mexico, Puebla, Oaxaca, and Yucatan. Hopefully, people will start projects for that area. But these are the two websites that are available where you could go search for ancestors. In review, we talked about a brief history of the Catholic Church and the struggle with, between the Mexican government and how it might have affected the creation of records. The various record types created by the Catholic Church, but we only focus on baptismal records, marriage records, investiga uh, marriage investigations, marriage dispensations, death records, and then we talked where to find them online, which is familysearch.org. Also where to find them offline and index books to help you. And that's it. I want to thank you and make sure to check out all the other great presentations by the other presenters. And I want to thank uh, Rootstech for this opportunity. Thank you all.